When it comes to venomous snakes, there's not many countries that can rival Australia for having the most venomous snakes. We're famous for it, being the venomous snake capital of the planet. But whether or not we have the most dangerous snakes is something that's really up for debate because in my opinion, more venomous does not necessarily equal more dangerous. And that's what we wanna talk about today. Besides toxicity, their venom, what other things go into determining how dangerous a snake is either to a handler or to a member of the public? Because there's a bunch of things that determine just how likely a snake is to ruin your day. So stick around guys, this should be a very interesting video. <laughs> talking about how dangerous a snake is to people we do of course have to talk about toxicity how potent is their venom what's their stopping power like and this guy here the eastern brown snake is the second most venomous snake on the planet today the leading cause of snake bite and snake bite death in australia but there's a lot of snakes significantly less venomous than him that kill many many times more people around the world so toxicity actually plays less of a role than you might think because while this guy might be able to kill me a hundred times over I can only be killed once. So at the end of the day, a snake either has to be venomous enough to kill you or not venomous enough to kill you. After that, the rest is bonus points. You're comparing getting ran over by a Mack truck versus a Kenworth. So yes, toxicity plays a role, but there's a lot of snakes capable of killing a human being who are a long way behind him. So the other factors all add up to maybe be even more important than how venomous a snake is when we're talking about how dangerous they are. The second trait, that makes a snake more or less dangerous, in my opinion, is how long their fangs are. And the reason this plays a role is, again, the eastern brown snake's a great example. This guy's very, very highly venomous, but he's got very short fangs, about two to three millimetres long, which means while he'd certainly ruin your day if he managed to get a hold of your skin, he also means that jeans, boots, are pretty adequate snake bite prevention for a species with fangs this size. On the other hand, if you go to North America and you're bitten by a rattlesnake or if you're bitten by a gaboon viper in Africa or something like this, a Russell's viper in India, they're gonna have fangs maybe 10 times longer than this guy. So they're gonna bite straight through whatever pair of pants you're wearing, if you're wearing a pair of thin shoes, something like this. Meaning that the likelihood of getting bitten is a bit higher than if you're bitten by a snake with very short fangs. So fang length does play a fairly important role in how dangerous a snake is in terms of its capacity to bite you through whatever protection you're wearing. After fang length, Another factor that I think people don't pay enough attention to is diet. And the reason my opinion diet plays a role with how dangerous a snake is, is twofold. The first thing is we've got to remember that venom is not designed to kill people. It's designed to kill their prey. And it works on people as a secondary sort of measure. You see, venom is a lousy method of self-defense. If this guy here bites me, it might kill me, but not until I've had time or the fox or the dingo or whatever he's bitten has had time to get him back. So the threat of a bite is better defense than the bite itself. However, his venom is designed to kill his prey. And this guy here, his prey, his natural food source is largely mammals, which means his venom is designed to work very efficiently on a mammal. And guess what? I'm a mammal, you're a mammal. So if you look at the snakes around the world that bite and kill a lot of people and rank very highly in toxicity testing, a lot of them are mouse eaters. The other side of the sword is not only a mouse eaters potentially more adept at stopping a mammal dead in its tracks, including you or me, mammal or snakes that eat mice are going to live in places you find mice. And where do mice and rats live? Where people live. So again, the snakes that eat mice are more likely to come into your homes looking for a food source than snakes that maybe specialize in eating frogs or something like this. So mouse eating or mammal eating species, in my opinion, straight up they're more dangerous than something that eats something more ambiguous out in the bush. These guys are coming into contact with people more often and that makes them significantly more dangerous. Now, speaking of coming into contact with people, the third thing that I think makes a snake more or less dangerous is their distribution. You see, the wider a snake's distribution, the more likely it is to come into contact with people. And again, the brown snake's a fantastic example. This species bites more people than any other snake in the country and it's simply because he's found over pretty much all of Queensland, all of New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, and a part of the Northern Territory. It means that something like two thirds of the Australian population come into contact with this species, meaning he's gonna bite a lot more people than say, the inland taipan. Lives in the middle of nowhere. Turn left, drive another two and a half days, you might find one. So this guy here bites more people, not because of his personality, but because of his distribution. He lives where people live. 
The other thing that distribution has to do with how dangerous a snake is, not in Australia, but around the world, is snakes with a huge distribution, particularly, say, a global distribution, have major issues with their anti-venom. You see, something like the saw-scaled viper, the snake that kills more people than any other species around the planet, is a great example. In, in India, saw-scaled viper anti-venom is made in the southern part of India, in Madras. And it works very, very well on saw-scaled vipers from that region. But if you're unlucky enough to be bitten in the north of India, up near Pakistan or something, the antivenin doesn't work very well. There's been cases where people have taken Indian antivenom to Africa and been treated for saw-scaled viper bites in Africa because there's no African antivenom available at the time. And it does worse than nothing. It does absolutely nothing at all. So snakes with a big distribution not only come into contact with more people, that saw-scaled viper, found over a third of the planet. That's a billion people. So snakes that have a massive distribution not only come into contact with more people, but they also have significant issues with anti-venom production, and that leaves some people left without any medical help whatsoever, leaving snake bites to get worse and deaths to increase. The fifth factor that, in my opinion, makes a snake more or less dangerous is their behavior. And this is where what makes a snake dangerous might break into two sort of categories. You see, what makes a snake more dangerous to handle doesn't necessarily make a snake more dangerous to the average public. The snakes that are traditionally regarded as dangerous to handle, things like eastern brown snakes, this boy here, taipans, mambas, they're generally fast, they're active, they're alert snakes. It means that if they want to bite you, they're hard to handle. They can come off a hook, they can come back on themselves if they want. They're hard snakes to handle. However, those snakes are also fast, alert, active. They're more inclined, if you're walking through the bush, for example, to be able to get out of your way, to know you're coming and flee, take cover. The snakes that bite the most people around the world are traditionally things like in Africa, the puff adders. In India, you've got the Russell's viper, the source guard viper over a big chunk of the world. They're the cryptic species. The species that rather than standing up and saying, this is where I am, piss off, they hide and they think, you can't see me, you can't see me, and eventually you step on them. So those cryptic, non-offensive snakes, the ones that don't come out and say, here I am, bite an awful lot more people than something like this brown snake here because of that behavior. So a snake can either have a behavior that makes it dangerous to handle, dangerous to the public, but behavior certainly does play an important role. Now the last factor, and in my opinion, the most important factor that determines how dangerous a snake is, is human behavior, the human factor. And a great example of this is the coastal type and found here in Australia. It's found over a fairly large chunk of Eastern Queensland parts of the Northern Territory, but deaths from the coastal type are incredibly rare. However, you go across the water to Papua New Guinea and they kill 600 people a year. And part of this is that distribution. They live in an area where there's not access to anti-venom. But another big part of it is the human behavior. If you're bitten by a type N in Australia, you're not gonna go to the pub and tell your mates about it. You're gonna go to hospital, you're gonna have anti-venom. Whereas in Papua New Guinea, people are bitten. The first thing they do, their first reaction is to go to the witch doctor, to rely on tribal medicine. And as Westerners, it's easy for us to laugh about these things. But you've got to remember, here in Australia, a significant number of snake bites are actually dry bites. There's no venom injected. Now, if you're growing up in a traditional society and you don't know these statistics, if your Uncle George gets bitten by an eastern brown snake, he has a dry bite. You don't know that. So the traditional healer says, you know, take this drink or eat this plant or do this dance and you'll be okay. And you survive. You thank the drink or the dance or the plant. And these traditions keep surviving this way until one day you get bitten by a snake and you get a full dose of venom and uh, the drink, the dance, the plant, it doesn't work. So in Papua New Guinea, they've got a big issue with people not coming into hospital until after trying the traditional remedies when they've missed that sort of golden hour to get it to hospital to get anti-venom and things are already too late. And a great example of this is also places like India. India has 50,000 people a year killed by snakes and they've got fairly good anti-venom, particularly for the south of India, but even the groups that are actually involved in catching and milking snakes for antivenom, the ruler people of southern India, they still rely on traditional medicine when they're bitten by a snake. So the human factor, what you do, plays a fairly significant role. Now with all this in mind, the overarching lesson really is that snakes can potentially be a very dangerous animal. They kill something like 100,000 people around the world every year. But when we look at the things that make them dangerous, the vast majority of the time it is preventable good shoes, good footwear, and third world countries, a simple rechargeable torch so you don't have to walk in the dark at night time would save a significant majority of those snake bites around the world. So snake bites might be a significant issue in many parts of the world 
It's also one of the most preventable health issues that we have today. And the thing that really makes it more dangerous more than any of these other things is that human factor, that last factor, what we do before we're bitten and what we do after we're bitten that really determines the outcome. And I hope you've learned something today. I hope you've enjoyed meeting Rowdy, our Eastern brown snake. And if you haven't already, please leave us a like, a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment in the question. What do you think is the most dangerous snake in the world? Let me know. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check on back next week. There's lots more wildlife coming. We've got lots more snakes for you guys to see. And uh, I'll see you next week, guys. Between now and then, be nice to snakes. Have a good one and take care.